One or two people have been asking me for some more kind of um, basic material um, for beginners, if you like, or for people who are coming back to the piano after a long, long time away, which I, you know, I know is quite a lot of people who are watching these. So I thought what I'd do today is talk about three little techniques, or two and a half, really, you'll, you'll see what I mean, um, for making your piano playing more smooth, more flowing. Um, the reason I'm going to talk about this is because, and this is something I mentioned before, a lot of self-taught pianists, or pianists who haven't had many lessons, often have quite a um, a kind of clunky style, even if they get quite good. If you listen to a lot of um, sort of rock stars who have taught themselves bits of piano, and like Paul McCartney is the classic example, um, it doesn't quite have the kind of flowing smoothness that... Um, you know, people like Elton John or Ben Folds, who have had the lessons, do have. That's not true of everybody. I mean, there's some great um, self-taught rock pianists out there. Uh, Amanda Palmer uh, is a brilliant example. I don't think she had any lessons. Um, but by and large, people who have had some sort of reasonably extensive classical training on the piano tend to have a much smoother sound. So I'm going to look at some of the reasons why that is, and also teach you these kind of two and a half ways um, of, of making your sound a bit smoother. Okay, now that little twiddle I played at the start there was in the key of E flat major, and there's a reason for that because E flat is a key that uses um, obviously quite a few black notes, usually E, E flat, A flat, and B flat, but also some white notes as well. Okay. One problem that um, self taught pianists often come across is that they kind of teach, uh, treat the keys like buttons, okay, so you press this this, and this button to get a chord of E flat major, these buttons to get a chord of C and all the rest, and it's not quite like that. And you especially run into problems if you're moving a lot between um, black notes and white notes, because these guys who treat the, the piano keys as if they're buttons tend to play the edge of the notes, okay, they think, right, this is the button, this is where I press it, there, okay, and in actual fact you can use the full depth of the key, and you really need to to get a smooth sound. This is something I've mentioned before, but I'm just going to demonstrate it again. If you look at what I'm doing here, just playing right hand twiddles, I'm digging really deep into the keys often, okay, especially if I'm hitting, if I'm travelling from black to white or white to black, okay. So often if I'm playing a shape like that, I'm hitting that G right up here. Okay. So the first thing to do is to remember that as well as moving up and down the piano, you can move in and out. Okay. Don't feel you have to be tied to, the, to, the, to these very um, end extremities of, of the keys. One problem that brings, which you need to get over, is... Um, because piano keys are levers, um, you need a different amount of force in each place on the key to get the, the same volume. So if you want to play um, a C there and an E flat here, you have to hit the E flat just you know with a little tiny bit more force to get the sound out. Okay? If you're hitting it there, obviously the lever's working with you, and you can, you can use the leverage, and, and you don't have to use quite as much effort. So. Using the depth of the keys and getting an even and consistent sound isn't easy. The way to, to do that is to practice practice your scales. Okay, Yet another reason for practicing your scales, because if you play all your scales all the way through, um, then you, you will handle, in the course of doing that, that just about every transition between a, a black note and its neighbouring white note there is. Okay, So... Practicing your scales will help the evenness, uh, will help deal with the unevenness that you naturally come across if you're playing the full depth of the key. Okay, so that's tip number one. Play, use the full depth of the key if you have to. Not always, but if you have to. Okay, so your hand should be moving this way as well as that way. Tip number two is um, what I call hand anticipation, and that is about as you play a note, getting your hand ready to play the next note. 
Yeah. Now, if you have classical piano lessons, this kind of stuff is drummed into you. If you don't have classical piano, piano lessons, chances are no one will ever tell you. Okay. And it's drummed into you because to play classical music or baroque music or whatever, you know... Um, okay, that kind of thing. You have to be able to line up your hand in the right position. If you look what I did there, that, that was just the, the, the very first couple of bars of... Um, a piece of bark for uh, suite number one from the French suites. I'll, I'll just slow that down. Okay, I've got that C sharp coming there. It's part of the melody. It's really important. So look what I'm doing. I'm lining up my thumb, ready to go for it. Yeah. Um. Again, a lot of people who have um not had lessons would have, might approach this like this. Okay, here I am on the D. Oh, now I need a C sharp jump. Okay, and that's where you lose the smoothness. So pretty much as soon as I was on the D, I could see that the next note I needed to play was C sharp. So my thumb was up there and waiting for it. Same thing was happening in the right hand. Let me slow that right hand down. As you can see, I've got that sort of awkward movement there. Whoops. Where I've got thumb and fifth finger, thumb on the G and fifth going onto the A so I can come down here smoothly. Yeah. Now, the way I do that is as soon as I'm landing on the G, I'm moving my fifth finger down. Okay. Yeah. So the act of landing on the G is the movement is I'm making the movement of pushing down on the G exactly the same movement as moving that fifth finger down, ready to land on the A. Okay. Again, someone who taught themselves would would take it more sort of step by step. Um, oh right, yeah, there we need to go, and there will there will be a gap. So getting ready for the next note is part of the process of playing the note you're playing. It's a bit like playing snooker or pool. You know, when you play a, a shot in pool, you're not just thinking about sinking the ball that you're aiming for. You're thinking about lining up for the next shot as well. And it's exactly the same with playing the piano. When you play one note, you're thinking about, or you should be thinking about, where you're going next. Now, when you're improvising, clearly, that you know, that, that's a little bit trickier it takes a bit of practice because you know you're not necessarily sure what you're going to play next a big part of improvising often is just playing the notes that fall comfortably under your fingers you know um so if you've landed there and suddenly you notice your pinkies up here under the c you can do that but if you want a particular sound say i i went over there from my thumb on the e flat down to the d flat whoops i'm out let me try Okay, and as soon as I'm hitting the B flat with my thumb, that thing is moving over. Okay, rather than oh right, I'm there. No, oh, now I need to jump all the way over here. Okay, so hand anticipation it takes a lot of practice, but after you have practiced it and mastered it, it becomes second nature. Okay, so that's why it's worth if you can digging out. You know, if you have piano lessons in the past, digging out those old books of Bach and you know all the sort of personal and sort of um, early baroque music that you did because that kind of stuff is really useful for doing this sort of thing because if you're playing and all that kind of thing it's completely unforgiving of you getting your hands in the wrong position yeah um you know which is why you do it in piano lessons so tip number one use the depth of the keys again mentioned that before in earlier videos it's really useful tip number two anticipate where your hand needs to be don't just think about the, the note you're playing but the next one you're going to play. Tip number three, and I, I, I said two and a half tips because this is really only half a tip, is listen to what you're playing. Now that sounds like a no-brainer. Um, obviously, you know, you can't help but listen to what you're playing or you can't help but hear what you're playing when you're sat at the piano. But the fact is, of all the instruments, um, it's actually really easy to play the piano and focus on the notes that you're hitting and not really concentrate on the sound that's coming out. With a lot of other instruments, you know, if you're a singer or a brass player or a clarinetist, or especially if you're a string player, you have to listen to the notes you're producing to make sure they're right. The piano handles that for you. If you hit G, you know, it's going to produce a G. It's not going to be slightly flat or sharp unless your piano is out of tune. But because playing a piano is such a complex process, um, you know, in terms of using up brain space, 
often it's easy to just forget to listen to the sound you're producing. Okay, so when you are playing, have a listen. Yeah, if you find that difficult, and it can be surprisingly difficult, get out your phone, switch on your computer, or whatever, and record yourself. Okay, playing a little bit of whatever, play it back and think, oh yeah, there's a little bit of a little bit of a bump between that G and that F. How can I smooth that out? Well, you know, it's a case of when I hit the G with my thumb, getting the uh, second finger over quickly to hit the F. So there we go. Um, use the full depth of the keys. Um, using scale practice to help you master that. Okay, that's yet another reason why it's worth playing your scales. Think about your hand anticipation. Okay, so if you've got a note here and your next note is down here, have, have a thumb or a finger ready to hit it. And listen to what you're doing. Okay, listen, listen, listen. You know, it's so important and so easy not to do. Okay, um, I hope that was kind of useful. Um, as usual, I'll give you a little plug for my book, How to Really Play the Piano, the stuff your teacher never taught you, which has got loads of stuff about basic um, the basics of chords and improvisation and things. You, you need to be able to read um, basic treble and bass clef, okay, to get the most out of this. Um, don't worry if you're a bit rusty because obviously there are, there are lots of uh, resources online that you can you can use to brush up. But um, if you can't read music, then you need to head off and learn how to do that first before you'll get anything out of this. But if you can read music and you want to start improvising and learning about chords and how they work, um, then this should be useful. Lots of people seem to like it anyway uh, and, and tend to use it in conjunction with the video videos. Um, okay, so I've, I've kind of waffled enough. I'll, I'll leave it there for today. Uh, next video I'm going to make will also be on a, a more kind of basic topic, I hope, for those of you who are just kind of starting out with this kind of thing. Okay, any questions? Give me a shout. Stick them in the comment thread. Happy to help if I can. And uh, I will see you again soon.